Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got a very, very interesting news going on. Many of you, I'm sure, already aware of this. Uh, President Trump talking about that this coming week he's going to announce the moving of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and, of course, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. <clears throat> and this has really uh, caused a major stir, stir throughout the Middle East, including Mahmoud Abbas, who's already called upon eight different Muslim nations to come to his aid and stop Trump from doing this. Uh, and it's really caused me to step back and look at what's really going on because the fact that the Turkish government is also weighing in on this. Uh, I want to look at that real quick. Reuters is reporting here a formal U.S. recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel would cause catastrophe and lead to a new conflict in the Middle East, Turkish Deputy Prime Minister Vikar Bozdag said on Monday. And of course, uh, that really caught my attention because I could not help but think that what's going to happen, even Erdogan has weighed in against this, this uh, idea of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. And of course, as I stated many times before, the Gog of Magog war is not Russia coming against Israel, but rather a NATO move against Israel. Now, bear with me when I say this. Of course, Turkey could be leading the way in this particular move. And there have been many scholars that have also suggested that Turkey is actually the true Gog of Magog to begin with. Uh, now, <clears throat> when I look at this, though, I see a much bigger picture. And I've stated before that I felt like that the U.S. would end up coming against Israel as well. And under President Trump's administration, we know that would never happen because President Trump has stood very strong and very passionate with Israel. Now, we have to go back, though, to Resolution 181 back in uh, 1946, the resolution then that was once again dividing Israel after we see the resolutions that were, were agreed upon to make uh, a, a Jewish homeland in the Middle East uh, after World War I that, uh, that also encompassed all the country of Jordan. Then, of course, after, I think it was like 1920, 1921, somewhere in there, they divide the land up again. Then uh, Transjordan is given over to the king's son, uh, the king of Jordan there. Uh, this is how the Jordanian family came to be rulers of that area for the helping of the uh, the British military and overtaking the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so then all of the modern state of Israel, including the West Bank and Gaza, was given over as a Jewish homeland. But by 1946, that was divided yet again under the Resolution 181. And of course, Pope Pius XII had a lot to do with that particular resolution. He was there calling for uh, not only the dividing of the land, but making sure Jerusalem became an international city. Why? Because the Vatican is intending on bringing about a false millennial reign. And of course, they need to be able to rule and reign from Jerusalem because this is where everything has to happen at. Uh, this is the keystone of the millennial reign. And of course, it is truly a keystone when it comes to the return of Yeshua the Messiah. But when it comes to the ideology, though, that the Vatican is going to bring about this millennial reign, to me it's just preposterous to begin with. But nonetheless, they are definitely trying to do that. And when they wrote up the Resolution 181, 1946, the Pope of Rome wanted an international or UN uh, uh, force monitoring Jerusalem. And of course, as we know, I've talked about this many times before, he had a lot of backing with a lot of Jewish uh, people that were involved in this. And I think that had a lot to do with the Rothschilds, them going down there, trying to make the Jewish state, uh, and of course, not including those ones that were the slaughtered of the Holocaust themselves, that were also coming home. They tried to stop them from coming in, though. They, did, they wanted to limit the numbers until uh, the plan was being staged to get the right people in power, wasn't really the right people, but to get certain Jewish people in power in order to make sure that Jerusalem was safeguarded for the Pope of Rome. Now we saw with Ben-Gurion and also uh, Moshe Sharit, he was the second prime minister of Israel. Both men, Moshe Sharit, knowing Pope Pius XII personally, and they were making sure that his wishes were to be kept. In fact, so much that they sank uh, a, a ship that was coming in that had that was a, a actually by um, uh, that was the later prime minister of Israel. Uh, his name uh, slips my mind. It'll come to me in just a moment here. Anyway, though, they 
killed all the soldiers that were coming in that wanted to liberate Jerusalem, and they sunk the ship as well. Uh, and the reason being is because they did not want Jerusalem liberated. This is not what the Pope had in mind. I also think that the Palestinian West Bank, and this is not against my Palestinian uh, friends that are listening out there, do, I do understand many Palestinians have been born in this land here, and they do have a right to live in this land, but the point being is they have been used by the Vatican in order to be able to create this buffer zone, if you were, uh, which they're actually uh, children of Am Amman. Uh, they are the Ishmaelite children. And of course, they are from the country of Jordan. They've migrated in back uh, during the time of the Second World War, as well as the Egyptians were migrating in, and that's how we ended up with Gaza uh, becoming a territory as well. Now, <clears throat> why Gaza, I have really no idea, but clearly the Vatican's intention was to make this buffer zone in order to protect Jerusalem from any of the Jewish people ever uh, actually succeeding in militarily. Now, 1967, that all failed. Uh, in, in fact, it was Prime Minister Begin, as well as speaking, thinking about earlier, before he ever became Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Begin was actually the head of uh, a, a very strong military force, a, 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 you know, rebel, not so much a rebel force, but a Jewish force that wanted to actually liberate uh, Jerusalem. And uh, it was Rabin that gave the order for, uh, from, from uh, Ben-Gurion to actually sink the Atalia, uh, to stop the, uh, the group there with, ben, uh, not Ben-Gurion, but with uh, um, the former prime minister there that I was speaking about just a moment ago there, to keep them from getting the military equipment they needed to take Jerusalem and also to keep the manpower from coming in under uh, Prime Minister Begin, which at the time he was uh, not a prime minister. But anyway, this is what happened, and this is how the course of history has all been changed. But since the Jews made it into Jerusalem, this has been a, a thorn in the side of Rome ever since then. And this is why we've had all the intifadas that we've had. It is clearly the biblical uh, prophecy of Daniel. When, when Daniel writes about that they come up strong with a small people, that was clearly Esau's descendants, that is the children uh, uh, from Rome who came up strong with the Palestinians in order to try to uh, take over the the state of Israel. Now, I think, again, it should be one state. They live side by side in harmony because clearly you're not going to fulfill, fulfill prophecy if Israel does not return to the mountains of Israel where God said that he would bring back all 12 tribes, not just the house of Judah, but all 12 tribes are to return to this land and they're to live on the highest mountains in Israel. So therefore, we have some issues still yet. That's one reason why we can't just give up the settlements. Uh, we should be able to live in amongst the Palestinian people that are there and it should be one state. Now, <clears throat> I'm kind of getting on a ramp there. Don't mean to do that. I really got to get in some very important information that I want to share with you here about what I see that's going on. I said Gog of Magog. Now, why would I say Gog of Magog here, especially with President Trump and say that the United States could be very well part of a Gog and Magog war, NATO forces coming against Israel? Well, under President Trump's administration, he's really been building up Israel getting ready to try to take down Iran, Lebanon, etc., all these different nations there in the Middle East, and uh, also helping Israel to gain more traction as a superpower. And when I say this, uh, now the, the cells have been, the air has been, the wind's been let, let out of the cells, so to speak, because the witch hunt against President Trump has certainly taken on a whole new meaning. And I know there's a lot of people who do not like President Trump. They may disagree with him. You know, I've always appreciated his stand with Israel, but I some issues, you know, I have concern about, uh, no doubt about it. But the thing is, is no one's perfect. But, you know, there's some things that have been. Well, I don't know. I won't even go in there at that, that point here. The point is, is I see that they're trying to bring this man down and they're trying to bring him down for one reason. Uh, there is a global agenda. There is an elite. There is a shadow government that has one agenda. Uh, and President Trump was going down a road with another agenda there. Now, it can really get turned into a quagmire of a mess trying to figure this all out. But let me just share with you here this particular article here that I, that I pulled up today. Uh, this is on uh, NBC News, Feinstein Senate Russia Pro Building Obstruction Case Against President Trump. Uh, now this is, of course, Diane Feinstein. There's a couple of things I want you to listen to here real quick here, because I think it's very important that we, that we actually hear these comments here so you can see where I'm going at this uh, in just a moment here. Listen into this here with Diane Feinstein. And the Judiciary Committee has an investigation going as well. 
uh, and it involves obstruction of justice. And I think what we're beginning to see is the putting together of a case of obstruction of justice. I think we see this in the indictments, mm -hmm. the four indictments and pleas uh, that have just taken place in some of the comments that have, are being made. Now, I see it in what she's speaking, speaking about right here is, of course, none other than um, uh, General uh, Flynn, Michael Flynn there, and his cooperation with this investigation in order to uh, get immunity for him and his son. Uh, no doubt they have put a lot of pressure on him, and of course they're trying to get the collusion with Russia involved in this. This is exactly where they're going with this. And of course the evidence seems to be overwhelming and mounting up. Listen to this part here as well. Robert Mueller's star witness at this point suggests that Mr. Trump's transition team was running a rogue foreign policy operation, and it brings Mueller's Russia investigation straight inside the White House. What has been shown is no collusion, no collusion. Michael Flynn was a top surrogate for Mr. Trump on the campaign trail, introducing him at rallies nearly two dozen times, even floated briefly as a possible vice presidential running mate. As a great general, great guy, great man. How good is General Flynn? Is he good? As National Security Advisor, one of the President's key confidants. General Flynn is a wonderful man. Flynn's guilty plea was part of a deal to avoid more severe charges for himself and his son, signaling that he has valuable information about the President's inner circle and even Mr. Trump's family members that he is willing to share. He is pleading to now very what is that, what they're actually going to on this here is Jared Kushner as well and what I'm seeing here is that not only is, are they looking at bringing about these charges against uh, President Trump, which to me are really bogus. Uh, I, I still, I know I have differing views on this. I have one uh, a friend there that made a comment saying that it is against the law what they did, if in fact they actually did these things here, as far as speaking to the Russians before the election. To me, I think that's kind of... Uh, well, rather preposterous, it would even be a law to begin with. When you're trying to make peace and reaching out to other uh, world leaders as you're getting ready to be elected or possibly be elected to uh, the President of the United States, you should have that opportunity to be able to do so. Now, that's just my opinion on that, and I realize that from what I've been told, the law of the land is different on that. But where are we going with this? What am I actually looking at? Also, Mike Pence may also get caught up in this uh, horrific uh, you know, uh, obstruction of justice, if it were. Now, again, I don't think it's obstruction of justice, uh, but nonetheless, if this is what happens, then they may bring down both Donald Trump and Vice President, uh, Vice uh, President uh, Pence and uh, Jared Kushner. All these men may be brought down, may even come down to a complete impeachment, but I believe that there is a reason behind it. And of course, here's the smoking gun. Uh, no, not Jared Kushner, but Jared Kushner, let me just bring this out real quick before I go to the smoking gun, uh, failed to disclose he had led a foundation of funding illegal Israeli settlements before a UN vote. Uh, now, th th let me tell you why there's this witch hunt is really going on. They call it illegal Israeli settlements. Uh, I do believe that we should buy land. And I do think that it should be a situation not to where we can't work with Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian people, but it should be the same way for the Palestinian people that want to be able to live anywhere inside of Israel. If you're an Israeli citizen, which there are over 2 million Arabic citizens in Israel today that can purchase land inside of Israel and build a house, or if you want to buy land and build an apartment complex. Uh, I know that there's no doubt there's some issues that always go on on both sides of the fence there. I'm not getting into that issue right now. Just trying to say that they could work together and they could live in peace together if we get all these uh, special interest groups on both sides of the fence there uh, in political circles in Israeli government as well as the political cir circles inside the Palestinian uh, um, uh, government. Well, it's not really a government, but the Palestinian uh, uh, administration. We see both sides are definitely influenced by outside sources. Now, I say this because where are we going with this here? The smoking gun. If President Trump and Vice President Pence are ousted and found guilty on obstruction of justice and are impeached from the office, what would they do next? Now, there's all kinds of legal scenarios that would say that, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, the Speaker 
Speaker of the House. I don't really know the actual order of who would come in to be president next. But in my opinion, as I look at what's happening on the political landscape, I believe it's going to be, well, guess what? I think it's going to be this guy right here. That's right, former President Obama. Why? Because this all took place prior to uh, President Obama leaving office. So therefore, if these obstruction of justice, if there was actually indeed considered to be collusion or they, for some reason, they find it uh, and find President Trump guilty as well as Vice President Pence, if they're all caught up into this, then technically you would have to wind back the clock to the time when President Obama was in, and President Obama would have to take office once again, and guess what would happen then? They would call for a new election, and he's the only man that can take that place as far as from what I can see that they're up to. And this is why I think you see Obama following all of these political trails. We've seen him follow Trump everywhere he went. He was there, not just follow, we're talking about he was ahead of the game. When President Trump went to the Middle East, there, uh, or the Far East and all that, so was President, former President Obama. When President Trump came uh, to Europe at the G20, well, Obama was there just before him. When he went to Rome, to the Vatican, Obama was there before Trump got there. When he went over there to meet uh, Angela Merkel, well, Obama was there before Trump got there. Uh, why is all of this? And now we find as this Tensions are mounting up against uh, North Korea. Obama's over there with President Xi Jinping, meeting with him as well and other world leaders, ahead of India, etc. Uh, what's going to happen? I think that they're going to end up trying to impeach President Trump, and when they do, they're going to take down Mike Pence with him, and then we're going to see the Gog of Magog battle set in array like never before. And again, I'm not prophesying this. I'm only suggesting that this is what it looks like we're headed to. All right, so if it doesn't happen, it's not a prophecy. I don't know that that's the case, but it just seems strange to me that this is the scenario that's being set up. And I could see where if it did go that route, that indeed Obama would go into uh, to become president again until they have another election, which would take another year or two years to actually work that mess out, not to mention a possible civil war uh, in the country as a result of this type of actions. Uh, and, and if that all takes place, Obama gets back into office. Israel begins to maybe try to push ahead with the agenda regardless. Well, guess what? You would definitely see a NATO force. Remember, when we look at Gog of Magog, it's all sorts of types of uniforms come rushing down there. Uh, and I don't have it pulled up before me right now to be able to share that with you, but I can see very well that Obama would definitely come back into power and, of course, work things out with Turkey. And if they felt like they have to go down there and by force divide Israel, the Vatican's had enough, you can count on one thing. They got a man there that'll do the job for them. He's been a good yes man the entire time. <sighs> Gosh, not a good scene at all, friends. I'm Stephen Benoom. By the way, another thing is going to be a wild car against Trump as well. Now the Supreme Court is backing his permits for full enforcement of Trump's travel ban. And I did get to see a little bit of that travel ban myself uh, as we came back to Europe. You wouldn't believe what you have to go through in order to come back to the United States. So very tough, especially if you're a foreigner. My case, of course, American citizen, so it makes it a little bit different. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Sorry about the lighting here. I don't have the electricity to run it yet. We're just kind of winging it right here. Uh, but we do love you. Thank you, and God bless you. And it is cold, to say the least. If you've seen any smoke, I've seen a little bit of smoke rise up in my nose a moment ago. Uh, we're kind of cut back on the power here until the electric company gets out here. So uh, we're, we're kind of... Toughen it out, except for one room that we can warm a little bit there. Toughen it out in about, uh, oh, I guess in Fahrenheit, about 40 degrees in the house here. God bless you and shalom.